there are plenty of videos on YouTube showing you exactly how to install power in your van. But we're going to show you how we took that DIY part just a little extra step further in the whip. Before we bought this bus, we were looking online for inspiration. Now there's plenty of videos of van conversions, van tours, and every single video you always found a wall that just occupied by panels and controls, anything to measure your battery voltages, your water levels, your solar power. Didn't want that, it looked too clunky and, and the design we were going for, the only place you could go is on this back wall here. I knew I had to improve on this wall of controls, so I built this app. I will try and go through this system in layman's terms, as I know this is a van conversion, a veggie channel, and not an electronics channel. Now, if you think of this app being like a window, a window into a system, into a brain, and that brain being a chip. This chip and this tablet communicates two ways via Bluetooth. Now the processor has been programmed via the Arduino ID. That's for another video. I don't want to get into software. We're just keeping this video all about hardware so far. And the app for the tablet was actually built using MIT's App Inventor. Now App Inventor and Arduino, all open source. So anyone can use it and it's all free. Now of course it's a tablet, so it also has all the other features as well. Not just to control the bus. You can browse the internet, check the forecast for the area, check our socials. So if we are on the bus and we get any notifications from you guys, this is the first place we'll get it. Now that was a good trip and a good park up, swimming in the wastewater in the Thames. <laughs> so like with any computer, you have a main brain or a CPU or a processor. And we're gonna divide it up into inputs and outputs. Water sensors, gray water level. We also have an accelerometer, which measures the X and Y tilt of the bus. We also have temperature sensors. There's actually at the minute times four of them. And we will have battery voltage eventually and solar. Now the HMI is also an input and output. When I say HMI, it's a human machine interface. So the tablet sits on both ends. It's an input because you can press buttons and it's an output because it also displays information. And that also communicates via Bluetooth. Now on the output side of things, we got lighting for a wastewater valve, a uh, water pump. We can also control some other bits and bobs like your fridge and sockets. Oh, I've got, I've also got toilet level. Gas valve, a fill valve, which is a valve that allows you to fill water remotely. This is the architecture of the whole system. I'm going to do a couple of prototypes to get where I am right now. Yes, it looks a mess, I know. Here you have the processor. It might look complicated, but hide all that bottom there. And here is the main processor. That's where the program resides. There's a little connector there for a uh, antenna. This is how you program it through this USB port here. So this is where the lines of code is stored. And all it does is just manipulate these pins. You can make them go high, make them go low, reads the voltage on the pins. You've got to remember the computers are quite dumb. They just do stuff very, very quickly. So when the chip goes into here, you then break out all the pins into these terminal strips. A little bit more easy to understand and easier to install and tidier to install. So the lighting in the bus is either controlled the tablet or one of three buttons throughout the bus it's the middle one and there's one at the back door so the buttons are actually momentary so one press bathroom and a hold kitchen they can also be programmed for double press or triple press so you can control whatever you want on the bus if you can remember what does what so this is the button at the back by the back doors one press does the lights to the elevator bed but also a long press also shuts down the bus so it's handy when you go to bed. All you gotta do is hold the button, shut down the water pump, uh, the gas, uh, it turns off all the lights in the bus as well. So good to go for bedtime. Sorry it's not too bright at the front of the bus. We have got uh, cab lights, but they're not, they're not a little bit better. So these are the uh, electric doors, controlled by two motors for each door. Most of the time we leave the front one disconnected and just use this one uh, because the front one is quite close to the front seat. I am going to build a separate controller to control these doors. I want like a winter and a summer mode. So in the summer they do both open. You can bring the, the outside, that's such a cliche, the outside in. I'm going to program it so the front one just opens a little bit and the back one sort of tucks behind. So when you're driving you don't get, don't get as much wind noise from the seals. We have a button here, just like the illuminated buttons, that's the middle and the back. And that's going to pretty much just control the door. So the only way we control the door at the minute is either through the tablet, like open sesame, or leaning over to the driver's seat and press the button on the control panel. But most time that's stacked up with towels and stuff and bits and bobs. And, but we just pretty much use the tablet most of the time. But that's that's another little option we'll do. It with like a, a single press so door opens and a double press so we, it know it'll close after you. So you can walk out and not press the button on the outside to close after you. So limits are endless. 
It's all about trying to think of these little small little ideas around the bus. It makes your life just a little bit easier. It's not going to solve any problems, but just makes it a bit more fun. You think you're bad. I'm so comfy with my sister and my cuddle me. Yeah. So a quick tour around the bus, show you exactly what the tablet can control or read. Inside the water tank, we have level sensors. Water level comes up, touches the float, activates the switch, and then the sensor can read it. A bit of then a bit of programming, you can figure out what level we're at, and if there's a fault with the sensor, you might have jumped a level and one of the sensor's not working, so. 12 volt water pump. Gas valve and bypass valve. You never know when that will come in handy. We've got under cabinet down lighting. It's handy when you don't want to wake the whole bus up. Bathroom lights. We've got three original LED lights. The bus come with two, but we managed to get an extra one from the, the blooper community. Uh, so we've got even lighting around the front. These can be controlled either by the control panel or from the tablet. Inside the front doors, we've got LED spots above us. And out the back. Between the windows and the worktop, there's actually a backsplash. You need to put some edging across it, and it hasn't been even wired up yet. So, that's one of my next projects. The splash backs come. Ooh. Climb up onto the top bed now, and I'll show you the elevator bed and motor. It's not easy getting up here. I need to do a ladder. <laughs> so cozy up here. I have got a video on YouTube of me building this elevator bed if you want to check it out. It's a 12 volt motor. That's pretty much everything the tablet controls or reads. See over here, I've been playing a bit with GPS and I will be eventually getting the power consumption from the solar and the power consumption coming from the battery. Still got the fridge and oven temperature sensors to go in. The outside and uh, inside temperatures, good. And the electronics temp is the temperature of the electronics box and the vehicle voltage, which I'll get from the battery to battery charger. We've also got a level sensor here. Got left, right, front, back, slightly tilting forward and to the right. It's not calibrated yet, because I've been messing around with the software. So you've got bed, backsplash, that's a gimmick, that's for a future project. Gas on and off. And if you can see, if they're bold, that means that's what's happening at the minute. So gas valves off. Switch over to on or off. That's the door. Here that go open and close. Temperature history. So I do enjoy knowing what temperatures we're camping in. So I built this chart, which is quite basic, but it does a job. You've got temperature down here, blue being outside, red being inside. You can see since we've come in, you can tell that the outside temperature sensor is picking up some ambient temperature inside. So that needs to be sorted, needs to be relocated. And on the bottom here, you've got increments of over 15 minutes. This box here is all the LEDs. Timer for Shanta when she's cooking and then some high power switches for your 240, so fridge. Got the external socket on the side of the bus, and also you turn the inverter on and off of the sockets, and the, and the brightness. As you know, the uh, screen brightness is the biggest battery killer. Sometimes it's too much glare at night. So when you go into night mode, it's not so bright for the kids. So I hope you enjoyed the little insight to how this bus is controlled and, and works and how we built it. It's been a labor of love for us, and the best thing is it's no way near completed. So I'll put it in your court. As you've been watching this video, is there anything you think I can improve? I want this to be, be like a two-way community where I want to learn some good ideas. For example, because we've got GPS on this tablet, I programmed it so when it travels half a mile, it automatically turns off the gas. It's just a little feature, but I think it just makes the bus safer. If you're a van lifer or a software engineer and I've stimulated your creative juices, then uh, stick a comment down below. Please do. Any ideas you've got, please chuck them in the comments and then we'll go on this journey together.